Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. My special guest today is Augie T. He is one of the funniest comedians in the state of Hawaii and has achieved great success through these years, selling out the Hawaii Theater and also the Blaisdell Arena. And today, we are going beyond comedy. Hey, Augie. So, How's it, Rossi? Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, Augie, I want, I want to know about your background, I mean, your youth when you're growing up. Well, I grew up in uh, Kali Valley. Okay. Camford Housing. I uh, lived there all my life. Uh, went to Kaivai Elementary School. Went to Doe Intermediate and graduated from Farrington High School. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. You know, I went to Damien, you know, down the so street. So we neighbors, yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot of my classmates who got football scholarships went to David or St. Louis. You know that? Yeah. yeah. So how was it at, at Farrington? You know, uh, I think I grew the most as a person, honestly. You know, a lot of things happened while I was in high school. Okay. You know, one, I became a teen parent, but I also um, was ranked at one time seven in the nation when it comes to boxing. Yeah. So I grew, you know, um, as a person because I, you know, I, I like other kids. I had to grow up extremely fast, yeah. you know, taking care of my family, and at the same time, trying to compete on a certain level. So a lot of learning. But then I also talk, you know, now when I go out to schools, I also talk about how uh, important teachers are in your yeah. life. So there are a lot of teachers out there that don't get recognized. So I want to take the time out to say thank you to several of them because if it wasn't for them, you and I wouldn't be sitting here, honestly. Totally. So I want to say thank you to Miss Murakami, my eighth grade guidance teacher. Uh, there's uh, Miss, Mr. Kao, my drama teacher. <laughs> uh, there's my boxing coach, Donald Sark. Um, there was... Uh, also, uh, an English teacher who pushed me to the point where, like, I had this anger about her for a long time. <laughs> but, like, we settled our difference in my 30s, believe it or not, because she just knew that if I get pushed, I might be able to, you know, achieve the things that everybody else saw except Augie. Yeah. Yeah. Now, boxing, I had no idea that you were, like, one of the top boxers in the United States. How, how did that start? Oh, my brother was, uh, my brother Arnold was in the gym one day boxing. I went up there to go heckle him, of course, uh, to make trouble since I'm the oldest. And he was like, Alex, see you go in the bag. So I started punching the bag, and my coach, Donald Sark, was like, hey, you look pretty good at punching the bag. Why don't you, you know, start training? I go, I only train if I go fight this week. If I can fight this week. I was that bozo head that, yeah, if I can fight this week, let's do it. And I got my physical, fought that week. And after that, I was hooked. <laughs> I loved the aspect of uh, boxing and fighting and the discipline. You know, at first, it was all for the wrong reason. <laughs> then I realized, you know, when he sat me on the side, he says, you know, you have the kind of talent it will take to go to the next level. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Well, how was it in growing up in Cam 4 housing? It was tough. I mean, it's, you know, when, when you hear stuff like, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Mm. Honestly. It's like that, you know, who you surround yourself with can make a whole bunch of difference, you know what I mean? So, like, I'm so thankful that I had some pretty cool friends that never do the things that, I mean, I had some of them, and it's good to have them on the side, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, uh, but I had great mentors, yeah? yeah? I had great mentors that, like, kept me focused and kept me, uh, you know, straight on that, on that narrow road, yeah, they say, you know, because we all have roads in our life, and, you know, I had a lot of people that really took care of me and made sure that I uh, stayed on that path. Yeah. Now, Augie, so one of the, one of the people that impacted your life as, as a teacher, um, Murakami, Miss mm -hmm. Murakami, what did she do? Well, I was flunking English. Okay. And I always had problem in school because I'm ADHD. Okay. And I'm a little dyslexic. 
So I always had a problem like focusing, staying, you know, paying attention to anything. I was a kid in the back that talked. You know, and a teacher would go, Mr. Toba, you have diarrhea coming out of your mouth. I was that guy, right? So could never ever focus. And uh, I was flunking in English, and she was my guidance teacher. And she said, look, two things are going to happen. You're either going to get licking from your dad, or you're going to enter this speech contest. And I went, speech contest? Only for the nerds. She said, no, I'm going to help you. And this is, for me, like, you know, I love my mom and my dad, and they did everything they could, but like, it's the first time where I actually felt like somebody like really cared, generally. For you know, she really wanted to help me out. Yeah. And like by, after school. Yes, by spending time with me after school, wow. gave me that confidence. Yeah, like I wanted to do well for me, for my parents, but even for Miss Murakami, and you know. Um, when I did the speech contest, I kind of knew exactly what I wanted to become. I mean, I knew I wanted to be a comic in the fourth grade, but that speech contest really showed me the vision, right? To like, that I could actually do this in front of people. Yeah. And do it well. Wow, that's you impactful. Know, because, somebody, because somebody spent time with me, and I, when I talk to teachers, and when I talk to students, I talk about like how you know teachers spend more time with you, so they know, they know your habits, they know your weakness, they know your strengths, and you gotta listen to them sometimes. You know, they might find that gem in you, and yeah. and I think she saw something that I never see, my parents never see, and you know I'm so thankful for her, and like I said, all those teachers that helped pave the way for me. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned about, a, you know, being a teen parent mm -hmm. in high school. What was your first job in terms of? Man, I remember coming home and I just won the Golden Gloves and the, at that time, the, you know, the ABF in Hawaii. And I went, like everything was, like was laid out for me. My parents was fired up. I won Outstanding Fighter for both tournaments. First time that's ever done by a 16 year old. Yeah. Right? And, you know, free college, you know, and, Finding out that my girlfriend is pregnant, I mean, I still can see the, the faces of my teachers, like the disappointment. And I remember coming home, telling my dad and my mom what happened. My dad was like, well, man, I guess you gotta work. <laughs> yeah. You know, you gotta take care of your family. That's your responsibility. You gotta go take care of your family. So my first job was at Jack in a Box. But how can you afford taking care of your family working for $3.15 at that time? You know, uh, and it was tough. And luckily, you know, I, I paid attention in school when it came to, like, you know, applying for jobs and understanding qualifications. So I saw, you know, uh, opening for food service worker at the hospital, Kapilani Medical, yeah. went in for an interview. I insisted on an interview. And uh, we made a deal, <laughs> and I, I was there for 16 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. I worked at Kapilani Medical for 16 years, and, you know, that really helped me yeah. take care of my family, you know, because I was making more than my dad, wow. believe it or not. My dad worked at the city and county, but I was making about the same amount of money as my dad, you know, working at the hospital. So, you know, I, uh, I'm a firm believer that, if you want something, you gotta go get it. Oh, it's you, not gonna come knocking you on your door. You definitely went to go get it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I'm very thankful for that, believe me. <laughs> now, your family, you have, um, tell me about your kids, your sons and, and your daughter. Okay, I have uh, five all together, oh. yeah? We have a blended family. Okay. Uh, love them all, very unique personalities. Yeah. Uh, and very resilient, they, you know, you talk about you know, bullying in school. Easy for my kids to get bullied when their dad is an entertainer in Hawaii. Yeah. Because they think, you know, my kids uh, have it made. The reality is that I work hard like everybody else to make sure that, you know, they get the things that they need. And at the same time, I also tell them that you cannot depend on me. You got to go above and beyond because people are going to expect that from you because they think you have it made. So you got to work extra hard. You know, and I'm proud of them, all of them, because they had to go through a lot, you know, with me being their dad. 
For so, sure. For yeah, sure. man, they all get tough skins. Yeah, yeah. They all get tough skins, <laughs> and they all work really hard. Yeah. So I'm proud of them all. I'm proud and, of them. And then I, I noticed that your daughter, Mahea, mm -hmm. she's starting a, a Brave campaign. Can you tell me what that is? Well, at 11 years old, she was bullied in school. And we are able to identify that. You know, when, when parents dive into your children's life, I think, you know, I think we stopped doing that because mom and dad work in two jobs and sometimes, you know, gets overwhelming. But we gotta find some time in a day to find out what's happening in your children's life. And we realized that my daughter was having difficulty, right? And we found out what was happening, got that all resolved with her, you know, and she was able to take the challenges in her life. Right? She wrote a book when she was, uh, 11 years old That's and she amazing. got it yeah she got it published when she was around uh, 13 years old and then she started um, reading to schools because she is into pageants so that was her platform you know um, she wrote a book called it's okay to be different great and she started to read to like elementary school kids and pretty soon we started getting calls hey can you come and talk about your experience to middle school kids and that's where she looked at me and she goes I need your help <laughs> so you know we uh, developed uh, uh, a program for elementary school kids, middle school kids, and high school kids because she had a vision to talk about what she went through to help other kids in Hawaii. Yeah. So, you know, I always tell people, she's the one that gonna buy me my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like hearing about that, Augie. And you got, you, you started in radio a long time ago and you're still in, involved in radio. Yeah, you know, it's that one, uh, media where like you know I can express you know how I feel about things and you know every day we hear bad news and I hate it you know it's so polarizing right yeah. people on the left people on the right and they forget about people in the middle yeah. you know and I just like entertain people I don't want you to think about what's happening you know nationally locally just laugh I mean when you're driving in traffic you know, the last thing you like hear is bad news, right? <laughs> yeah. So I try to be as fun, funny as I can and, and, and lighten up the morning instead of being so, you know, so just yeah. polarizing with, like, bad news. Yeah. yeah. So I try to make it light. Okay. Now, how, how did you get your start into comedy? And why did you like comedy so much? Well, you know, like I said, I saw Andy Bumatai in the fourth grade my dad used to send me away to Maui because he wanted me to be influenced by my older cousins because he knew that, you know, if I stayed home, I'd probably hang out with the wrong kind of guys, <laughs> do the wrong kind of things. So he would send me to Maui, and my auntie took me to an Yvonne Element concert. Okay. You know, you know Yvonne Element? Yeah. She said, if I can't help you, I don't want no And I was like, why am I here? My Filipino auntie was rocking. I was like, why am I here? Put on the guy that was opening for Yvonne Element, and Andy Bumatai was the opening act. Oh. And I saw this guy make 3,000 people laugh, and I went, that's what I wanted to become. That's what I want to be. I want to be a stand-up comic. And like I said, you know, through... Eight great guidance, and then after my boxing career, I had six professional fights, but I always knew I wanted to be a stand-up comic. So I went to the Honolulu Comedy Club, I signed up, and then the rest is history. <laughs> it was so funny. I always tell kids, when you're really passionate about something that you love, believe me, the universe hears it. They hear it, you know what I mean? And I'm not lying, within the first month Two months, I met every single guy that I grew up listening to and watching. Jeez. How crazy is that? <laughs> you know, I was walking in the elevator at Kapiani Medical, and I saw Andy Bumatai. <laughs> I went, Andy, it's Andy Bumatai. And we, we talked for about an, at least three hours. Wow. Yeah. So my job is watching it. Yeah, I wasn't working for almost three hours because I was with my idol. And we talked. And two weeks later, I met I met Booga Booga. Wow. Because they were opening at the Honolulu Comedy Club. And yeah. I was a big rap replica fan. I saw James Grant Benton, Ed Cahill, and holy smokes, right? And then Andy, I was Andy's opening act. Andy took me to Kauai, I met Malcolm Bang. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then Frank DeLima, like, soon after. <laughs> so, like, everything kind of all fell in place when you put your heart and your soul and you really 
you know, go after something that you really, truly love doing, yeah? Well, that's awesome to hear. Augie, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond comedy. Sounds good. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Augie T. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. <music> Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Augie T, who is one of the funniest comedians in the state of Hawaii, and today we are going beyond comedy. Augie, mm -hmm. I noticed on your performances that you don't use any profanity. How, yeah. does, how did that happen? Well, you know, uh, one, I think people like bringing their families to shows. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, comic skill and stereotype of being nasty, you know, I... I do comedy like to the edge and then that's it. Yeah. I stop at the edge. And I'll tell you why I started doing clean comedy. One, uh, early on in my career, I did this thing. I did, a, I did a, a weekly thing at this club in Cali called Boomers. It's run by this uh, Farrington graduate. And you remember at one time they were trying to make one area uh, by Nimitz, oh, yeah. a place where instead of doing it in Keomoku, have bars over there. Yep. So I had a nightclub, yep. and he'd pay me 50 bucks for me to go up, and I would perform in front of six people. But weekly, once in a while, Pat Morita would come by. Oh. Yeah, Karate Kid, yeah. Pat Morita would come by. So he was sitting back there one night, watching me do comedy, and then several weeks later, he came back, and he said, hey, you know, you're funny, <laughs> but try to be... I like to see you really be yourself, expressive. That means using every language you could possibly use, you know, even swearing. Yeah. You only get six people. <laughs> Just go for it, right? So I said, oh, yeah, okay. So I was doing, I mean, for the six people was there, if you're watching, you probably saw the best show <laughs> ever because I was able to express and really, you know, do material that, you know, I would normally just do between, you know, yeah. you know, in front of, not in front of the camera, yeah, yeah. on stage. <laughs> and I had a great time that night, and I, I could actually feel the freeing effect of just being Augie for that moment, right? But what happened was the room is such a small room, and the light was so powerful, I couldn't see who was in the audience, <laughs> okay? I only could hear laughter from the six people at Pat Morita in the back. And then uh, my dad and my uncle walked in. And my dad, even despite being who he was, he never liked see any of his kids using that kind of language in public. Oh, yeah. oh my dad came on stage <laughs> to tell me, what you doing? Why are you talking that way? I don't read you for talk that way. And he's swearing while he's talking to me now, right? I'm 32 years old. I'm going, you're telling a 32-year-old man, not to, listen how you're talking, I don't care. You don't talk like that. Was, my dad was scolding me in front of six people, and I could hear Pat Marine in the back just laughing. <laughs> so when I say you probably saw the best comedy show that night, yeah, you saw me get scolding for my dad. <laughs> I was 32 years old, and my dad is scolding me on stage. And I swear to God, if he had one stick, he probably hit me too with the stick. So... There's a side of me that's still traumatized <laughs> that my dad at any moment could pop up and, you know, uh, even even being dead, you know, his spirit, maybe while I'm talking, just punched me <laughs> in the face or something. 
But <laughs> yeah, I've learned, I worked clean ever since that. And then, you know, Andy, when I worked with Andy, I think one night I came in and I, I used the S word. I said, dude, don't ever use that. You're not gonna make money doing comedy that way in Hawaii because people are still family oriented and, you know, it's, you can get more gigs doing it that way. And it's true, you know what I mean? I was able to, like, you know, do a lot of great gigs because I don't use profanity, yeah? No, so. and, and Augie, and, and then you ended up selling out the Hawaii Theater, and you sold out the Blazel Arena. How, how did that feel, going from six people to selling out the arena? Mind you, I wanted to do comedy just for fun. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> when I realized maybe 10 years into the business, I was like, wow, this is actually a business. So I came up with a business plan. I came up with like how am I gonna how am I gonna you know take comedy to the next level in Hawaii, you know I wanted a great business card so the business card was the first DVD live from the Hawaii theater yeah yeah and what I did was I went and I talked to sponsors I talked to people like McDonald's First Hawaiian Bank and I said look this is what I do and they they helped me fund my dream basically wow and then right after I did that man the comedy career just kind of I took off that business card, the first DVD live from the Hawaii Theater. Yeah. Man, did so much for me. And my business card to everywhere for people, you know, on the mainland, you know, before social media. People were buying my DVDs and, you know, uh, and I was packing places. So, you know, I took the business serious maybe... 15, 16 years ago. No, I, people, don't even, people don't know the 10 years before that. <laughs> you know, Augie, you come do comedy. Yeah. Uh, how much I get in paid? You know, make plate. You make, yeah. make plate. You know what I mean? It was like that kind of gigs. Yeah, okay, I go make plate. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you just, you know, you just did 20 minutes, 30 minutes of comedy, and they're going to pay you with a plate. <laughs> and I remember opening for amazing acts like Capenna. You know, early on in my career, yeah, I only got 50 bucks for opening. But, man, they, they put me in front of 20, sometimes 20,000 people. Yeah. You know, people who never knew who Augie was, and I was able to do the kind of comedy that I like to do, yeah? And, man, it's just been an amazing ride. And, and you talked about your comedy idols. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Melka Bangs, the Andy Bumatais, the Frank DeLimas. How, how does it feel to be performing with them on these tours. Yeah, no, it's surreal. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, not even two months into my comedy career, I started meeting these guys, right? These guys were in my life giving me some amazing advice. I mean, Booga Booga taught me the acting portion of my stand-up comedy. Not just talking, but like putting characters, right? Andy showed me the professionalism side. Right? Frank showed me the performance side. Mel showed me that you gotta be real. Doesn't matter if you're performing in front of three or 20,000 people, you gotta be able to do your act talking to just that one person, relating to that one person, and everything else all kind of falls in place. Be yourself. So, you know, when I started working with these guys, you know, of course, you know, I wouldn't tell them that. <laughs> but like, Every time I would hang out with them, I get chicken skin because these are the guys that I looked up to, yeah? Yeah, totally. So, it's awesome, man. I, I love hearing how it all comes together, and yeah, your trajectory is still, I mean, it's huge. Yeah, it's, you know, we just did a show a couple of weeks ago, and these guys are still doing it, yeah. even at that age, you know? And, yeah. you know... Uh, That's and impressive. People, well, people want to come. People want to escape. You know what I mean? Like, people want to sit there and be entertained. And that's why like, I'm always appreciative when people come to the shows because we're getting information and we're getting entertainment you know, off of phones. It's not personal that way. Yeah. You know, you're laughing at somebody in a phone. It's not that, like coming to a live show, someone's saying something and there's a response. How, I mean, that's, you know, people, we gotta communicate. <laughs> you have to talk story. You cannot be texting, looking at stuff on the phone. You have to communicate. But, you know? but Augie, reading books is okay, right? Because reading, oh, you know, you know my book Beyond. The I Lines. love the segue. You, you of love, course, you Rusty. love, yeah. you love my book. <laughs> and you know, dude, I I can relate to several <laughs> characters. And you know, we're talking a little yeah. bit about it. But like, man, the one kid that you kicked off the team. Yep. 
you know, it almost felt like when I found out that my girlfriend was pregnant. Like that was it, done. Yeah. You know, there's a lesson to learn in everything bad or good, yeah? yeah. And when I saw the lesson on how he felt like he was a man and you cut his yeah. line. <laughs> yeah, because it's all about character and discipline. Right. You know, and helping everyone achieve their full potential. Right, and the book was so simple to read. And, you know, me being dyslexic, it takes a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, like, I got everything. Because when I'm reading something, I want to be able to, like, absorb everything that I got. So, like... It's a simple book, to, simple book to read, very relatable, and yeah, you might not be playing tennis, but the life stories behind, you know, it, it, it does. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can relate to a lot of it. If you deal with people, it, it will relate to of you. Of course, 100%. Yeah. Read the book. <laughs> See, Rusty, read the book. Hey, Augie, we like going beyond the lines. Of course, you have to. Yeah. You have to go it's beyond the lines. It's the only way to live. I always tell, especially living on an island, right? I always tell kids, like, what's stopping you from getting to where? It's fear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when you get people, and believe it or not, there's so much people that want to help you out. You know what I mean? Uh, to, to erase the fear. It's just about you taking that step beyond the lines. Once you do that... Um, amazing things can happen whether you win or lose. Yep. Amazing, you know, you, 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 for character development, you know what I mean? Like, I know, like, I can never always win, but what am I learning when I'm losing? Yeah. Sometimes that's the most important thing to learn. Totally. You know? Now, Augie, what, what is a common misperception that people have of comedians? Man, like, we're on 24-7. <laughs> Like, people know, like, you know, I am not on 24-7. I can be on, yeah. but, like, you know, I never have that dark childhood like every comic. You know, you read about comedians, and they all get this really dark, oh, hidden, yeah. you know. I don't, man, I enjoyed life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I love the fact that my parents were dysfunctional. <laughs> I love that the people around me was very dysfunctional. But at the same time, I know that when I decided to become Augie the comedian. And I knew that I was public property, yeah. right? And I knew that I had to be friendly, be nice. And it does, you know, sometimes it's hard, you know, when I'm pushing the wagon in food land and somebody go, oh, you're kind of grouchy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you think I'm like 24-7. I'm trying to get my groceries and get out as quick as I can. But, uh, you know, they just think, you know, you can be funny everywhere, and that's not true. That's not true, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, Well, you're very, you're very real, and you're an open book. And right. I, you know, I love that, and everybody loves that about you. But I want to know, okay. Augie, what do you hope to aspire to achieve in your future? Mm. You know, at 50 years old, after doing this comedy thing for 27 years, in the entertainment business, 27 years. I'm stepping back. March 2nd will be my final show. My, I call it my final big show. August okay. last stand at the Blaisdell Arena. And I think it's start at 10 bucks. Oh, okay, so how's that? 10 bucks deal. at the arena. Anyway, cannot go wrong. Cannot go wrong. And bring your whole family because it's going to be a night of comedy. But like, I, I just felt like, you know, uh, the excitement is not there anymore. Yeah. And I want to try to do something... Now that my kids are in college and out of the home, I can do the things that I wanted to do at 29. Maybe one of the benefits of having a family early in my life. Yeah. Uh, now I can go out and explore, you know, and do things that interest Augie. Like, uh, I want to travel. I want to try to do comedy on the mainland. I want to possibly run for office, you know, in I 2020. Like and get kids involved in the whole you know, being American and having a right to vote, participating in making a difference. You know what I mean? If somebody like me can do something like that, I want to inspire, you know, other kids who think they cannot. They can, you know, and it's, like Rossi says, going beyond the lines. If you can do that, you know, you can not only change the way people see you know, you as a person, but you can change maybe a community, maybe even a state. So, you know, that's something that I aspire to possibly do, you know, because I cannot tell you, like, in two years. I have goals. Yeah. I have goals, <laughs> and that's one of them. But, like, 
anything could happen. Yeah. You know, anything could happen, and that's one of them. Like traveling and maybe possibly running for office. No, I, I love hearing that, Augie. And I like, I mean, you are inspiring so many people, and you are continuing to inspire so many people. And when I hear about people selling out the Blaisdell, like, you know, comedians, hey, it's Kevin Hart, it's Joe Coy, and it's Augie T. <laughs> thank you for being <laughs> on the you, show Rusty. today, Augie. Appreciate Augie. it, man. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit my website, RustyKomori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. Buy the book. <laughs> I hope that this show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.